Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, let's go over how to calculate the mechanical advantage of a lever, wheel and axle, incline plane, wedge, pulley, and a screw. Let's get started. In this video, let's figure out how to calculate the mechanical advantage of a lever. And at first, I will use calculating the mechanical advantage using output and input force and then one more specifically for the lever. Okay, let's get started. It says a mechanic applies an input force of 30 newtons on a lever, and it produces an output force of 90 newtons. What's the mechanical advantage of the lever? So let's go ahead and we'll draw a lever. We have the fulcrum here, okay, and we have an input force of 30 newtons, okay, and an output of 90 newtons and we want the ma mechanical advantage okay so basically all we do is we just take the output force divide it by the input force and that gives us the ma mechanical advantage notice that the newtons will cancel cancel 90 divided by 3 is excuse me 90 divided by 30 is 3 so the mechanical advantage is 3 Let's look at another example. Okay, with this example, this question, it says, how much force needs to be applied to a lever with a mechanical advantage of four to lift a 1,200 Newton object? Okay, remember, mechanical advantage equals output force over input. Okay, so let's look at this. We have a lever, and we want to know what the input is, how much effort you have to apply, so we'll call that X. And we need an output of 1,200 Newtons, and we have a mechanical advantage of 4. So, let's just plug in what we have, okay? We know that the MA is 4. Uh, we do not know where the output is 1,200 Newtons, and we don't know what input. We don't know how much effort we need to apply. We can place 4 over 1 and then cross multiply. So that gives us 4x equals 1,200 newtons. We're going to divide through by 4. Okay. These cancel. So x is going to equal 1,200 divided by 4 is 300. And remember your unit of measure, which is newtons. So there we go. So we have to apply 300 newtons here with a mechanical advantage of 4 to lift an object 1,200 newtons. Okay, let's work one more. With a lever, you can also calculate the mechanical advantage using the length of the effort arm divided by the length of the load arm. Okay, so it says, what is the mechanical advantage of a lever with an effort arm of 180 centimeters and a load arm of 60 centimeters? Well, if we have our fulcrum, excuse me, our lever here, and the effort is applied here, the length of this is the effort arm, and the length here is the load arm, okay? So in this, let's just see what we have. We have a mechanical advantage equals the effort arm is 180 centimeters, and the load arm is 60 centimeters, okay? Centimeters will cancel and 180 divided by 60 equals 3. So the mechanical advantage equals 3. Video, let's go over how to calculate the uh, mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle. And uh, we'll do two types of problems. One where you calculate mechanical advantage and another one in which we will calculate the size of the wheel. So let's get started. What is the mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle of a wheel radius of 25 and has an axle radius of 5. Well, the formula you use is wheel radius divided by axle radius. And here's what I'm talking about. Here would be a wheel and axle. The gray is the wheel. The dark is the axle. So the radius of the wheel is from the center out, and it says it's 25 inches. And from the dark section is the axle, like right here and it is 5 inches. 
So we're just going to plug this into the formula. We have 25 inches divided by 5 inches. Remember the units will cancel and that gives you a mechanical advantage of 5. Let's work another style problem. Okay, this problem says, what size wheel radius do you need if you have an axle with a radius of 6 inches if you want a mechanical advantage of 3? So again, uh, let's go ahead and plug it into the formula. Let's see what we have. We have a wheel radius. That's what we're trying to find. That would be x. The axle radius is 6 inches. Okay, And it has a mechanical advantage of 3. Okay, So I'm just going to place 3 over 1. I'm going to cross multiply. x equals 18 inches. Actually, that would be 1x. So we know that if you want a mechanical, if you have want a mechanical advantage of three, the wheel radius needs to be 18 inches. In this video, let's go over how to calculate the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane. And you can use one of two formulas. One, you can use mechanical advantage is the slant length, which is L over the rise. And the slant length is this length right here, and the rise is there, okay? Or a second way you can use is uh, the angle I'm talking about, this angle right here, it's called the inclined angle. And you take 1 over the sine of the angle in radians, okay? So let's work two examples that use both of these two formulas. Okay, this first problem is what is the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane with a height of 6 inches and a slant length of 12 inches. Okay, remember that the formula is, uh, we're going to go with L over V. So the slant length, it says, is 12 inches. Okay, and the rise is 6 inches. And when you divide 12 by 6, you get 2. Remember, these cancel, and so the mechanical advantage is 2. Now let's work an example where we use the an angle. Okay, let's get started with this one. It's a little bit more involved. It says, what is the mechanical advantage of an inclined plane that has an angle and an inclination of 20 degrees? Okay, the first thing we need to do, and I'm going to move this up, is that we need to convert the degrees to radians. And we can do this by multiplying 20 times, not 200, 20 times pi, and I'm just going to use 3.16 over 180. And when you multiply this out, you get uh, 35 hundredths, okay? Okay, let me give you just a little bit more detail. When you divide 303 and 16 hundredths, or pi, by 180, you get 175 ten thousandths. And then when you multiply 20 times 0 0.0175, that's where you get, and I am rounding to just two places, the 35 hundredths. Now we're going to take this and plug it into the other formula. We're going to go 1, and we're going to divide it by the sine of 35 hundredths. Okay? And you'll use the calculator for this. And when you do that you get 2 and 9 tenths. So whenever you have, let's go back to our original question, you have an income plane that has an angle of inclination of 20 degrees, you're going to get a mechanical advantage of 2 and 9 tenths. Let's go over how to find the mechanical advantage of a wedge and also a pulley system. So let's get started. Okay. For a wedge, the mechanical advantage is you just divide the length, which is shown here, by the width, which is shown here. So here's an example. What is the mechanical advantage of a wedge that has a width of 3 and a length of 6 inches? Okay. So we just plug it in here. The length is 6 inches. The width is 3 inches. These cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So your mechanical advantage of this wedge would be 2. Now let's look at a system of pulleys. 
Okay, with pulleys, assuming that they are all the same size, you just use, for the mechanical advantage, 2 times n, and n just equals the number of pulleys. So here's an example. What's the mechanical advantage of a pulley system? It has four pulleys that are all the same size. So we're just going to go 2, and we're going to plug 4 in for n, and 2 times 4 is 8. That is the mechanical advantage. In this video, let's talk about how to find the mechanical advantage of a screw. And this will be a fairly basic uh, video, okay? So we won't be um, converting between different units. Okay, first let's look at the equation we're going to use. We're going to take pi times the diameter over the pitch. Now, pi times the diameter will give you the circumference. Now, if you look at this picture, the diameter is the length across the screw, and the pitch is the length between the threads. So, uh, let's look at our problem, and I'll explain this a little bit more. Okay, it says, what is the mechanical advantage of a screw that has a diameter of 25 hundredths of an inch and a pitch of 20 threads per inch? So, let's go ahead and uh, see what we have and set it up so we can find an answer. Okay, first, let's just use 3.14 for pi, and we're going to multiply it by the diameter, and the diameter is given of 25 hundredths of an inch, okay? And then we're going to place that over the pitch. But what we need to do is we need to convert the pitch into the distance between two individual threads, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take one inch and we're going to divide it by 20 and when you take one divided by 20 that gives you five hundredths of an inch so I'm going to use this number so now we have the formula set up and then all we do is uh, multiply and divide so we're going to take 3.14 times 0.25 and that gives you 785 thousandths of an inch and we're going to divide that that's the circumference and we're going to divide that by the pitch of five hundredths of an inch and when you divide these notice that the units of measure cancel and that's going to give you a mechanical advantage of 15.7. So in summary, all you need is the diameter of the screw and the pitch of the screw, and you can calculate the mechanical advantage. Thanks for watching, and remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to someone today.